Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to PEL phase number two. I'm a little bit concerned about what just happened in the intro briefly there. Uh, but regardless, we're here, we're ready, we're good to go for another four games of PUBG action from Europe. And gentlemen, joining me to my left-hand side, I'm Kyle Harris, no one cares about that. We have Froz and we have Avenger. Guys, ready, willing, awake, very excited for today. I'm awake, at least. Yes. I'm awake as well. Oh, great. I'm hyped. <laughs> also, after that intro, you can see how much fun we're having here. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it, it kind of talks to how, how much fun we're having with our... Frost can't really, I, I Frost can't can't really do, do it. You can't really is. do I, it. I can't do Frost that. is trying. I'm the only one that can do it with two arms. But let's not do that. No. The pictures and the, everything is out there already, so no, it's indeed, good. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about, of course, uh, when it comes to yesterday coming into today. One of the big things that we had coming in from yesterday for our first day of Week 7, of course, was the fact that three out of our four teams to get themselves chicken dinners were teams in the bottom five. So as I said yesterday, a fire has been lit underneath them, Froz. And two of those out of those three teams did pretty well. One did kind of terrible, Not let's be well. honest, even if they got a win. So, uh, Enns, they got a win with yes, 9 kills. they did. But then the other placements... That's 19 points. Then. That's 19 points. The other placements were well, the 16 with 0 kills, a 15 with 0 kills, and a 14 with 1 kill. Yes. That's 1 point there. That's 1 point. So that's 20 points. But G2, they did even worse. <laughs> with a win. They got a win <laughs> with 6 kills. Wait. They but worse. they only got 19 points because they only got three more kills the rest of the day and no placement <laughs> points. G2, who are currently in what? Second, no, third place, second, third place? They're in the top four, yeah. Jeez. Oh, All right. So okay, they, uh, they had a win. Second. Had a win and a terrible day the rest of it. What a weird day overall. Yeah. But it was it was kind of weird because we saw a lot of the teams that are down there in the relegation spots doing really good yesterday. Mm. I mean, you also had like reciprocity. Uh, doing pretty well, and as we talked about, M19, you had Vitality, and, um, well, Unity didn't do really good. Um, no, but I would say on top of that, it's, it's been a very flat day. Yeah. Uh, the, the top team didn't get that many points. It was a 19 with 39 points. The, the rest was kind of very split out, very linear. And uh, I think it's the lowest week we've had so far, the lowest day in, points, in terms of points accrued Definitely. throughout our day, okay. uh, both for phase one and phase uh, two in four days. So that's kind of interesting, but I think we're going to see some more today. And I'm curious to see if M19 is going to kind of continue the hunt down on Crow Crowd because sure. Crow Crowd also had a below average day, I would say, of, of their usual and what you would expect them to have at least. You're I expecting mean, the potential of the lower pack to maybe increase when it comes to things like Crow Crowd, this is This is their chance to actually do something about it because coming into next week, you don't want to be down there anymore. You want to yeah, make yeah. sure that you're fighting for number 12 or even maybe number 11 there. Let's take a look at it overall. Navi at the moment still in that number one spot and firmly so as G2, as you guys previously mentioned, apparently didn't have the best of days, but they still got themselves a win nonetheless. And you see here as well, 25 points difference from M19 and Crow Crowd. And actually yesterday, the exact point difference M19 had 25 more points than Crow Crowd. So if they pull off the exact same day, they're going to be tied up for that 11 spot, which is going to kind of open the bottom pack a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Unity did have a rough day. Vitality stepped up a little bit. Reciprocity did so. Ends as well. So it could open up the middle pack, up, uh, the bottom pack a bit more than, uh, than we would expect, I would say, because I thought it was pretty much done for already. After our 72, six, uh, with our 60 games yeah. and our 72 games, we had a bottom pack that was very solidified in the bottom. But we should also take a look at the fifth to sixth place there because Important the fifth too. place is still a, play, a position for GLL Grand Slam. Yep. And right now, TSM is sitting there, not too comfortable though, because Race Your Edge is just 17 points behind. And that is not much. That more, could be one game. More comfortable than before though. Raise Your Edge has not had the best of, oh, I yeah. guess, the start of the week, end of last week as well. Yeah. They, yeah. There was a moment where they took fifth place. Exactly. Last week, actually, Raise Your Edge was on the fifth place. It yeah. took over TSM. For the first time, TSM dropped out from their fifth, fifth spot since week one, actually. Yeah. It was only for one day though. So, yeah, but uh, they're, they're back now. But, but they're close. And it's, it's, it's very close. On top of that, Faceland as well, they're nearly 100, pe 100 points away from... Uh, 100 pesos? 100 pesos. 100 <laughs> um, placement oh. points away from the fifth place. So I would say at this point, we can say congratulations to our top four teams that are already 100% guaranteed qualified yes. to the GL Grand Slam. Like it's been for a couple of weeks now. It does feel that way, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, if you uh, look further down from sixth to seventh place and downwards, 
win strike on seventh place, they have over 50 points to catch up to TSM. Mm, yeah. And same with uh, NIP. So it's not looking too good for those teams, but they are still fighting for the money, being top eight at least. Yeah, top eight, obviously, and the global points, which will come into effect later as well. And everything that goes into the long run, of course. But top eight, I would say that's a... Uh, that's an ambition for many of the teams that are sitting in the middle pack currently. It's the top four spots already taken, but obviously you want to get something out of uh, in playing here for eight weeks. Hard, all the hard work you put in have to be have to be paid up. But yeah, yeah. it's very close. We honestly have, if Kurokart decides to step up their game, if M19 have an amazing day like they did yesterday, we have a lot of teams actually fighting for that top eight, much more than I actually expected um, after this amount of uh, games played. Well, as it stands with yesterday, it seems like M19 was able to win out the day. I think, and then FaZe was actually second place off the back of that. Uh, so not too bad a performance by FaZe yesterday, even yep. though it was kind of, I can't even remember their specific finishes, but you know, relatively Third, decent. five, second, 12? Third, five, second, 12. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They had a pretty, so pretty, bad, pretty bad game on the last Rango game. Yeah. One yeah. kill only. Um, overall, you remember it's a G2, so I talked to Phosphase afterwards. So apparently one of the G2 guys Pulled up in a car, yes, and shot out of them at the car in the Swap, car. Swap oh. seat in Swap the car. Swap seat in the and car. Shot in them now. Hot keep. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I like that. That, uh, was, that was that some was. Some people call it you K mine people, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hexeta does it a lot as well, especially when he's playing uh, face it and pops. Yeah, so, uh, it's it's very it's very fun to see how skillful people can be at both correcting the vertical vertical spray and the like the kick of the gun mm. but also correcting how the move the car's moving after and, you swap seat. and there's a lot that goes into it because when you swap seat in the car as well you need to hold w yeah. to make sure that you have momentum forward because if you don't this, uh, the car will start sliding so you have to hold w mm. while swapping seat and knowing that it's the right seat and yeah. then aim out and then start shooting and then control the spray while moving. I think I saw a highlight of Shiv doing it as well with the car 98 one shot in the head, which is pretty cool. A lot, a lot of people Very have nice. started trying to do it yeah, more yeah. and more. And I mean, that that comes down to the mechanical skills that a lot yeah. of the players are really good at. Some pe uh, some players excel supreme at it. Yeah. And that's what's, honestly, that's what's uh, really beautiful about this game. Once you hit like a certain skill cap or skill level, skill seating, then you start doing stuff like that. Shooting people out of the car, swapping seats like that. Raise your edge on screen at the moment there. Yeah. Has there ever been a moment that we've shown Raise Your Edge in phase two and X Chris has but not been eating a lollipop? No. Nope. He always has a lolly. It's a signature move. That's why he's killing it's so many signature people. Signature move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the big what's Wait, going did, on here. Did Knights get a new coach here? Did I hope Knights not. Knights got a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, 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 okay, guys. Let's listen to me. I've got some great tips. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Currently, I, and we have Yannick from TSM uh, helping and coaching the team, or more of an analyst. I think it's both things. He's, he's a motivational player, and I think he's the, probably the the highest level of coach you can have. He's yeah. still currently playing in the sure, contenders sure. in PEL. Uh, he's played with Vitality before. He's been in multiple lands. He's extremely experienced, and he's a bit older. So he can bring kind of the the matureness, the matureness that this yeah. team is because Gustav is extremely young, Michael is extremely young, Roy is also young, but obviously the more mature. Boogie Boogie is the older guy, but not not as mature as some of the yeah, other guys maybe. Not, not, <laughs> okay, let's let's be honest. He's, he's Danish. Mature. He's Danish. Okay. <laughs> no, he's. I mean, when I think about Yannick, I think didn't he play in Oakland as far yes. back as Oakland Land, which is well, a long time in ago. In Oakland, now. he didn't play. No, but he did he play played, with Rogue. He played with Rogue at yeah. Ian Katowice. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. I'm and he played. Mixed up. He played with Vitality at the start of season two as well, where they actually managed to get a third place. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of pedigree. A lot of pedigree. Another there. coach here. 17, Liquid 17, previously form, former Optic, Optic yeah. and Secret as well. He played with mm. Secret for Star Wars Season 2 as well. Unfortunately, and they didn't coach as well a yeah. little bit. Team Liquid was one of the teams that wasn't very flashy yesterday. Normally, you kind of come in and see them have a you know a good start to yeah. a week, etc. But yesterday I wasn't mean, really that. It wasn't really good, uh, but it came down to two of the games they had in the middle that wasn't that good. Right. The other two games that did still get nine kills in each of the games. And decent placement, six and a fourth in the first and uh, last game. Mm -hmm. But the two middle games, it was the 13th and 11th with only one kill in both of the games. Yeah, but I, I mean, if, if they get the, if they make the same two day, like the same day as they did yesterday, 
Yes, do that today and tomorrow as well. They're gonna get a 75 point week and it's gonna be fine. But still, yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna catch but Navi that way. Exactly, you're not gonna catch up to Navi because they're still around 55 points behind Navi, but they're only 12 points behind G2 right now. What's going on? Another coach there, Frolicker. Yeah, uh, three used three to play for Cloud, Cloud Nine. Nine. Yeah, and Ghost. Yeah. Now he's uh, also, over here coaching. Yeah, also, I would say he's probably, I guess he's higher. Because, like, if you're talking ranking wise, he played in NPL as well. So NPL? Yeah. Was he on the Clan 9 rosters when yeah. they were winning championships? Okay. So, there's so. only two players to ha that have been playing in both NPL and PL. Frolic is one of them, Voxic is the other one. Yeah, and we asked Frolic last time, and, he a and we asked him, or he, he actually said it without too much of an ask. I think he, he explained a bit himself. Now that he played in both, he said, yeah, the players in PL is actually a lot better. <laughs> there you go then. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's the only, there's two people in the world that can actually, with a factual statement, talk about the skill of both From teams. From first-hand experience. From first-hand experience. Mm. It's Frolica and it's Voxic. And Voxic, he just got relegated to Picadores in yes. NPL. We can, we, we, can, we can ask him. I, d I doubt that he will go against his his own region now. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frolica is one of one of us. He was right. already one exiled. <laughs> he was already exiled, yeah. So now he's trying to get back. <laughs> he got accepted back. He wouldn't want to talk bad about them right no. now. <laughs> suppose not. We're just playing a few more moments here before we get into our first game of the day, of course, as everyone's getting geared up and good to go. Your expectations for Miramar to start things off, boys? Any thoughts? Well, uh, you can start. Honestly, I, uh, I'm i looking to see uh, a TSM win. Mm. Uh, I, I think it's about time. But it's been a far uh, cry since they were dominant on e Miramar. Yes, and what we saw in phase one, of course, was a lot of circles in their area, but yep. they also played it different. They were more split, they took more compounds. We saw it yesterday where they didn't take the compound that NIP was in. They didn't have a big split, so I'm curious to see if they're going to be able to take one uh, chicken dinner here today in Miramar. I'm going to go with Race Your Edge. I hope they can get a win on Miramar. They're playing it better than TSM. They got three wins on Miramar. TSM got zero, so let's go. You want to see the fight for fifth continue. Oh, yeah, I baby. like it. All right, let's get to it. It's game number 77. It's Miramar. It's Pansy and Sims. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Uh, we are live into the matchup, so let's hope we get a good game to start this off with. I want, I want a prison circle, Richard. It's all I've ever wanted. It's all I've ever dreamed of. I and pray. I've, I've now seen one. It's it, the you've, first you've one. You've seen I've, it with your own eyes. It won't actually, no, that's wrong. It wasn't a prison circle. It was more towards like the Los Higos, Los Higos sort of bridge, bridge just coming out of the edge of it, playing the coastline. It's, it's certainly the closest I've ever seen. Um, but I want something it to near. happen. Valdemar. I want weird circles. I want oasis. I want islands. I've never had an Oasis finish. That'd be That'd amazing. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Trudging what through it? water in the sunny sands. I'll tell you what, it's warm outside, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's I'm scared for my life tomorrow yeah, as, as a ginger person. very ginger. He's yeah. very pale and very ginger. I'm merely just pale. I'm like a milk bottle. But it's, uh, uh, dangerous mm. times for both of us. Yeah, we, like, we would not do well actually on Miramar. I don't know. I think we can handle ourselves. No. You've lied to yourself if that's the case. A lot of body armor would help. Do you, can you imagine how hot it would be under actual body armor and on a desert, basically? No, I can't. I've never no. physically done anything. Be very moist, damp. All the words I really don't like saying. Mm. <laughs> Prison circle, go, 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 go. If this goes to the north, it's going to be a, a very nasty migration because most of the team's edging towards the south here, given the, the plain path. I'm just waiting for it to come in, okay? Uh. Centers up, nothing weird, nothing wonderful. TSM circle all day long, but the question is, can they defend it? They had one of these yesterday. And it didn't go according to plan. Or was it last week? Excuse me. They've certainly had something up this neck of the woods more recently. And they didn't come out on top. Wind strike. The repositions there. Tierra Bronca. Maybe they move up to Cruz de Val. They are on the floor. And I can see vehicles in hand. So they can reposition inside the circle and loot elsewhere if they really want to. Navi, unfortunate for them. Their usual spot would be at the top end of the map, mm. but this time they find themselves polar opposite, and the circle's gone against them. Yeah, we, we've seen Navi actually playing a hell of a lot towards the north. Even if this, the plane bot did kind of allow for the southern side, they seem to be favoring the northern approach, which I, I, I don't mind. It seems to work well for them, but this time opting for the south. So we'll see if that maybe has an effect. They do tend to do quite well, though, when they play this kind of edge game as well, when they're forced into that more passive style. 
Um, but again, the circle, not, not awful, not brilliant. It's just perfectly fine. And I do wonder if we see, again, water treatment just having all the attention. It feels as though it, it becomes inevitable uh, throughout these games. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. M19 is only one of those teams down towards the bottom who are kind of, I think they're in 12th currently, um, looking up towards Crow Crowd and down below them is Ents. So I can imagine they'll be wanting to try and maybe get another one of those wins that they pulled off before. Uh, but, but around that, it's, it's all those teams, basically. Your Unity, Vitality, Reciprocity, obviously Ents, M19, Crow Crowd, all looking for a little bit more. I do feel as though we're starting to see them playing to not lose rather than playing to win sometimes, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily the play style that's, that's uh, kind of telling of that. It, it feels as though just kind of the mentality towards the game. When you're in relegation, obviously it's very hard to not play, you know, to not lose. You're, you're sitting there kind of knowing, oh God, we might actually have screwed this one. You know what I mean? We've left it too little too late. And I think we've been saying that from the start of the season. Some of these teams, you can't, uh, you can't be sitting there going, well, there's 96 games. Well, you know, there's still you know, 30 more, 40 more games to go. It's fine, it's fine. I think we've seen now how pivotal that is. And I'm looking at this game, though. Windstrike's position, to me, is quite a fun one. They've uh, got a lovely little bit of loot up there and a wonderful entry point towards the circle. They have complete freedom of the north. Uh, do as they please, take the time on the loot. They should be geared to the nine, so they'll be pretty chuffed. They decided to go further afield up to Campo Militar or just military bases. Some mm -hmm. teams are starting to become, and call it for simple terms, um, a little bit surprised they've not gone deeper into the circle. Maybe potentially gone Cruz de Val. Just give them a bit of a, an easier entry point here. But for them, yeah, they've got the pick of the bunch. They can D pretty wait, much go wherever they like. The only thing they need to be aware of is teams that will be skirting the western side. Doesn't raise your edge when you pick up Cruz Duval, if it is that sort of plane path that allows for it. We I think, I, I may down, be wrong. We have seen them in the, uh, Around down, that area. Excuse me, up in the north. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if but they, they would really do that one, but. Kind of, we spoke about this yesterday. You'd have expected them to be, while they're dropping, watching for these other teams that are going to be landing. You'd, you have an you'd imagine on that. so. But. It's first game of the day. I feel as though some people may be a little bit not you know, as quick to go into it. But also, Winstrup might just have the loot routes. Again, we talk about this a hell of a lot. But I think we will play the game, right? We all have our more preferred drop. We know the buildings that seem to give us the better loot. And you kind of work your plan around it. These players obviously have refined that even further. They can loot incredibly quickly, get the best gear they can in the most optimal way, and get out of there. Obviously, with the settings, they're not quite the same as you know every move. Oh. A little bit of a tumble. Uh, not you know, normal as the same games you guys at home play, unless you play in your um, more predefined leagues. That will be probably phases if they spot it, just perching on the ledge. Gravity. This Makes sense. Fun. Full face might have an eye line on it if it does. It could be in for a bit of a face show. You speak about the loot rooting scenarios. Mm. Liquid is probably the most predominant team in the league. And, and again, doing that because of the small cities that they have and yes. how they work, both Pachinki and Picado plays off to that for me I, I'd really like to recommend you guys at home as well if you get the chance and you know, they have a team stream up do make sure you check it out some of these teams will have purely their POVs um, being available so you can see it from their perspective so do make sure you check that out as well obviously stay here put it on another monitor um, <clears throat> as well as the maps so you, got as three yeah, you know yeah. PUBG observing you gotta All have three monitors but the, the point is I'd, I, I recommend just seeing so you can see how refined these players are at, at being able to do that and how good they are individually at this and it is a skill it is an ability we have m19 getting very close to phase i don't think they're going to necessarily clash but they're close enough the central area getting very very busy around hacienda uh unity moved up quite quickly vitality were never far away tsm now under pressure from g2 towards the east and nip shifted a little further towards the north i very much doubt phase i want to take a fight on the edge of it and they want to get further afield which is fair play to them why not? There's no one lingering at the moment towards the north and the northwest side. So do what you can. Maybe skirt the edge of San Martin. Probably even go further afield, coming around the back of water treatment. Looks like Windstrike getting the vehicles and they're on the way. They might go further up all the way to the north, just before Oasis, past Torre Armada, and work their way in. By opting to go to Campo Militar, the downside to that is that a team has got ahead of them. Reciprocity yeah. is set up. They might be having a look that way, should they have the scope, should they have the field of view, they will be able to see Windstrike's path, maybe even cut them off, should they want to take the fight. Probably not worth it at this stage in the game, keep your gear, keep your utility, everything else that you need to move forward. Let's, can, we, can we just have a little look at what TSM opted for? This would be their circle to play with, right? If you looked at the central positioning on it, they should have pick of the litter as such. They usually do the Hacienda split, right? They'll yeah, send I'm one up over the field and then two, well, two over the field. They've actually honestly, gone for the three ones, Augustas watching the cross. I don't know 
know if... I think it's because I'm so used to now seeing that Northern Shift coming out. I feel as though them not maybe looking where NIP have gone is a, maybe a misread. But again, maybe I'm just reading the circles as tendencies that we've seen. There is still a very big chance it could go anywhere, really. It's just, it seems very common, especially if you have the likes of, you know, FaZe already leaning towards that. They're on the hillside just to the west of NIP. So it looks like, again, teams leaning towards that side. G2 in a similar position to before. They play slightly to the east of the compound. Last time they worked the way across, reciprocity doing the same thing. So a lot of the teams who had the option, who could use those longer rotation routes, opting to go north, whereas the ones who are kind of stuck on the southern side have to, you know, you can't really cross the San Martin Road. For TSM, there could be a bit of muscle memory there as well. You have to remember from phase one, they had so many wins on Miramar and so many circles that came around two, 300 meters of where they usually like to drop. Mm. We had an absolute ton of finishes around this Hacienda up by water treatment, and it's still prevalent there's still a lot of them happening so yeah. you do get a lot of viewership from where they are they took the crossroads the little broken building there they go across the field no one can stop in the field so you know that that's dead space no one can punish you from that angle then everything else that works off the band they like to set residency and there's no way approaching it without being seen you can just shoot people on arrival which is what i'm trying to think which team it was actually reciprocity we saw last week where mm. rafi wasn't watching one of the parts where they got pulled up on an errant girl hmm you set up in those scenarios so you can watch people on arrival, on approach, circle. This is interesting. Centralizes up. All the teams are already in there. And this is where we now begin to get mm. that quite slow play. There'll be a few people that want to just shuffle in a little bit further. Yeah. But we only have two and a half, three teams outside of the zone. I do worry about, about Liquid slightly in this 2-2 two -two split. I feel as though there's a potential for a crash. I don't know if anyone's going to really go for it. DA could be tempted, but they're still okay. I doubt they would. Na'Vi could be looking their way. Again, it, it just worries me. If someone becomes desperate for options, they will take it. G2 might have to crash a compound here. Let's see where they head towards. M19 can just slide in towards San Martin unless they opt for something a little bit heavier. They've gone to the southern side, so not a bad shout. They do have the nice behind them, but it's G2 I'm looking at because where do they go here? The liquid one's good because it's kind of safety oh with viewership. Gempty can watch the cross, and if someone does want to pull off on them. That is the power of taking the compound across the road. The 2-2 two -two split, yes, it, it's weaker in numbers, but the strength is the amount of viewership that they get. Vitality will not come down from the mountainside. There's no point. If you do, you just run in a gauntlet, and you'll get murdered on arrival. But Ibiza and Samti can basically just be forewarned if anyone wants to roll upon them by the viewership that their teammates will get across the road. If they want to flood the backside, you will, getting down that terrain and getting down the mountain, you're just going to be... Bobbing all over in the vehicles. I'm seeing First Clan have an eye line onto Windstriker who have gone deeper inside the circle just past the water treatment. The Knights have vision on whatever's going on with Diaz's vehicles that are trying to hide them or do whatever they can and, and make it work. It was a bit of a, there, yeah, it's that's... a bit of a bump to get them going. That's a bullet answered back. So somebody has spotted them out, provided they don't just sit here for too long and give away the position. Mm. We saw it yesterday where First Clan were actually repositioning on, on teams. Tunnel vision is one of the biggest killers at this level, in my opinion. You forget that third party is a real thing. You forget to smoke off that wall, that corner, that cross. And you just expose yourself for a second. And another team will happily take full advantage of it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at Razor Edge. They've been scouting quite meticulously. You saw around the east, they're pulled up, looking across. Um, not sure where they're going to opt to go towards. There is room in the northeast. Oh, I'll keep my eyes on that one. If we see you guys at home, do make sure you open that map stream up so you can keep... A little bit of a track on it yourself. Um, the western side is a lot of room, but it's not prime territory. You're walking into San Martin. We have, you, it's very hard to scout, very hard to see beyond those first couple of buildings when it's so dense. Um, Dimash, curious loot there. Clearly not primed, unless he's got the old Extendo Mago on that and he's having a great time. Um, I hate that gun so much. The amount of times I die early to that. I try and use it and it's just like, no, 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 no. It's not having it. No, it makes me very sad. Um, raise your edge. Just want to touch on quickly. You can see them on the map. And as we bob along with them, they're still rotating outside of the white and through the north. This is one of their biggest killers, in my opinion, especially from phase number one, is that they go for these long, wide rotations. Yes, it's cautious. Yes, it's, it's safe for now. But then when you get an entry point to the circle, it's so dense, you're lacking prime territory, prime real estate. There's usually a team waiting for them. They lose one or two on rotation, or they just turn up to a full team and get demolished on arrival. The 2-2, the two, two, actually, it's a 2-1-1 one, one for FaZe Clan. Makes it easy res for that for now. Safety in that big old barn. 
the circle goes that way. We go, oh, that's a... That's a hard shift. That's a really hard shift. So we're going down to the south, and now every bit of safety that they had around that Hacienda, and then full 360 around it, water treatment, gone. Minas, gone. No, Team Liquid's compound is so strong here. M19 opting to go southern side of San Martin has really paid off. That's paid dividends. Or are you going to see a nice little crash coming out? Bit of a little love tap there for the Vitality boys. Jazza, very put down by the teammates. Na'Vi have very good positioning in the south as well. That's kind of turned around for them situation-wise. It looks like Team Liquid, when they did pull across their players, Gemdi's gone up on the hillside itself, so that's interesting. Let's see where TSM take themselves. Ents, they might be running right into the back of uh, Vitality here. Just... Really quickly, keep it a note in your mind and see how this affects them late game. Vitality all got in the vehicles and wanted to go straight away. That knock from the vehicle of knocking over a teammate has now slowed them down. So they're forced into a 2-2 and oh, enter at the back door because Jazza still has to heal up. Long game, see if that does pay any effects and see if that does cause them grief or they lose a player early on. We'll keep an eye on it, as I say. Ends have moved out of Minas Generales. They've come round, they've swung, they're in that compound. Where Vitality are going to be. TSM are running a bit of a gauntlet. Two vehicles split between four players. It's always going to be scary. And at the moment, it's going to be no man's land for them. They'll have to hit the rocks, the ditch. Open territory. This is, um, yeah, this is a bit brutal. This circle, you've got to find anything you can. And you can't really go further afield because as you're doing this, you're running across teams. Your vehicles are becoming more unstable. Thinking of unstable. Kind of hot tin roof. At least he's... Down for now, Miracle will be back up on his feet. Winstrike oh, have done well. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, they haven't. They're not inside they're the circle. They're not in there yet. Excuse yeah. me, I thought this was the one further, mm -mm. further no, down. No, they're still in a bit of a spot of bother. Reciprocity have chosen to come up towards Hacienda. Oh, this is so busy. This is going to be a rough fight. Oh. If they go for this one, end up here in the building itself, so they'll be able to spot out windows, potentially hear the cars coming up. Hacksteady is driving up to this one. They're not being subtle about it. Maybe not expecting a team to be in here. I don't know. They're going to find their uh, opponents pretty soon. Though. You can see Gaxi trying to eyeing up. They know someone's nearby, and there's Scoom pulling up. So now they know there's contact in here. Lovely headshot from Gaxi. Going to slow down Scoom from trying to support. Rafi's on G2. a bit of an individual play here. He needs to slow down and allow his teammates to be able to be you know, in trade range. Gangsy's going for the pre-nades. I don't think they realize Shiv and Rafi are here so close. They're so focused on where Scoom is. Scoom will be giving a lot of attention away just for the simple fact that G2 are now being magnetized. Oh, Gaxi, where did he just go picked up from? Unity? Him. Was that Unity you found him? Yeah, yes, that's the end in the distance. Dastish is pretty far. He's down south. So that's opened up the gateway here. I don't think... I don't. I doubt the reciprocity know who it was in there, and now G2 are folding into this from the eastern side. So Scoom's gone down. He was already getting dinked up and tagged up by NIP, and G2 just kind of finished what they started. They're on the move now. Here comes the push. Good work from MBS to hold a nice little aggressive angle. He can fall back, but actually Shiv's right there. Shiv wants to trade in, but MBS has a second, but Shiv's been aggressive. Eight bullets is all he has, and he can't pull it off. MBS out of the hospital and putting someone right back into it. Nice work from him. 12 HP, has to pull off a heal soon enough. Oh. And his teammates are there. Reciprocity dying like flies. For a team in 14th position, that's an appalling start. Oh, the circle move. The pull-up was real. And I tell you what, it still continues. Nookie and Timmy, they fall simultaneously back to back. Here came from Orange, that's a two in the barrel. And just like that, absolutely demolishes them. Three players taken down by Orange. Job. Done. Bye bye, win strike. Mexi decides to run a bite. See, that's fine. Remember what I spoke about earlier on with Raise Your Red? Struggling to find a position every time they come late game? The same things happen. They to turned be fair, up. Hold FaZe on. Did hold catch on. Up. The circle. No, no, okay. no. Yeah. We've had two hard shifts. But I'm not going to give if you, that. If you still were so far away from the circle in the beginning, if you, weren't, if you were more inside of it, you wouldn't have to run that huge goal. If you were more, insi more inside of Hacienda, mm. where are you going to go? They've it's had a long two one for me. hard shifts. I think it's, I think it's brutal. I think. I, it, yes, it's not nice, but when you're still turning up in the blue, you're going to have to expect to lose casualties on the way. Yeah, no, sir. I, I, look, it's not, it's not the ideal plan, but I think you're going to have to commit to what you've been given, right? And when you have two hard shifts uh -oh. and the late game play, the slow side of the previous circle was a good choice to go west. It's impossible to then go yeah. slamming around to the east when the central point is so, so rife with teams. Liquid have gone away with murder, as of Na'Vi. They were both in very you know, awkward positions before. The southern to eastern move has helped them out massively. That northern side, though, Hacienda's got my attention. We've got G2 in a nice little kind of cheeky 2-2. Two, you know, two, two. Kane and Erdia's position really might help out Chris and his teammate, because then they can kind of leverage off the back of them, because they've got Unity, NIP, all these players in their way. 
The issue is if you hit a turn on to Chris and Brex call. If they can separate them from the pack, and that leaves Udir and Kane in a hell of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. TSM, their position, it's okay, but it's very exposed. Uh, it's in the open. I was hello? just about to say that one grenade might roll through and take out several members. What a, and it oh has done. Oh my god, what on earth is that? When you're playing in such close proximity and you're in a bowl kind of area, the terrain, the grenades are just going to roll towards you. That also <laughs> may have been given the information away because ends were shooting at them. So maybe G2 have read that well, acted on it and just obliterated them. That's a big EU nade right there. And we've actually seen Chris just being found by the old Vector. Feels pretty bad, feels pretty awful. This is Northwest, this is over just kind of to the southeast of San Martin and the hillside. The Knights were up here, M19 were up here. Raise your edge, try to slide in the back and Sets just slid into Kemba, so that's not good either. Sigzi and Minox looking for options. The nades are coming out today, it seems like. And they're surviving, that's fine. They're not too far from the circle, but there is Border Patrol directly front and center of them. If the Knights read this one and get into a decent position, they'll slaughter as your edge, but Reels does get answered. The challenge is here, so Zigzi puts one down. How much further can they go? That's the closest player. There is another one holding the line. Oh, Zigzi. Bit of a weird and wonderful angle here. They might not expect this one, and they don't. He catches them. That's really nice from Zigzi. It's not though. Oh, oh, the nade, he's got to push forward. He knows he's going to have to soon enough. He's switched out to the mini and is going to pray that he hits like a nice little headshot. He does do that. That's given him time for the heal, but the blue's going to start moving in, what, 35-ish seconds? So he'll have to keep that in mind now. And as Menox, does the option of revive come through? Wanted, flushed. 30 seconds. You could go for the revive, but you know that Snark might have a nade, and that makes it very tricky. He's opting for it. Eight seconds on that one. Let's see if Snark's pushing it. It's all gone quiet, so you might be considering that's exactly what's happening. Keep your eyes on the kill feed. Unity are doing whatever they want. They're fine. Vard's on the other side here. He's just going to try and play gatekeeper to this. Znark has snuck up and found a deeper angle. I like that. And he's getting aggressive. Znark's on the play, and he might as well try and ruin it for him. He's taken down. Menos, can he find another? Up and over the rock he goes. And that just slaughters Raise Your Edge. A nice try from Sigzi and Menos, but it's not good enough. Vard goes down, and I think that was the last of the ninjas to stand. And that means that Unity has a way forward now. Back to back, all three teams fall simultaneously. Aitzi gets involved, Grenade goes down, and so do the Knights. G2, they're playing this one quite passive at the back lines. Kane to New Deer have taken up residency in TSM's old position where they remove them from. That keeps them inside the circle and gives them a bit of a springboard Navi position. Vitality. Look at this fight about to happen as well. That's brewing in the background. Shadow is right next to a doozy. Best looks. They heard all of this. This is a Navi even split scary a little bit here as well. I don't think they meant to. Senya's been knocked. Did I don't think that was... The move? I think so. We might have been in process. Not what you want. Senya did get the tab at least. I guess that was from the grave, but is the spot. Shadow now knows he's got a lot of company right in front of him. Where's his teammates as well? They're further behind. Wow. Okay. Um, Fears are going for the central. Oh, that of the could map be nice. That could be very nice. Ground. That nade. Pokemon, though, he does get tagged. Not gone down, though. DA finding Liquid. Excuse me, the other way around. Liquid finding DA, should I say. Shadow opens it up. Best Blotch goes down. Then there's only two of them, so. You might see the push here. Has to be coordinated. Don't through the windows, otherwise, you're going to get smashed like that. Oh, that's not good. Please don't peek. Tiny angles. Thank you, Shadow, for stepping up and just getting in there. They can get a revive. Let's remember when you peek things like that, it's a tiny box where they can literally aim within like a centimeter and you're not going anywhere, whereas you have to aim within it. It's much harder. So just purely from aiming mechanics, that's always a rough thing to do. DA died out in the West. They couldn't get past Liquid. Liquid retained great positioning here. Unity have nothing to work with but a shack and they're trying their best to keeping hold of it. G2 still have themselves in a 2-2 split quite wide apart, but doing fine. And Ents out in the Southeast, very nice for them. This next circle could be punishing. Phase very central and Vitality holding the South. James keeping Unity dead to rights. This will allow G2 be to come behind them and basically plant a grenade. Udia might just continue oh, the onslaught. Vitality, what a touch. Ents as well. I think Oof. that's too far off. They need to go a bit further than that. But again, G2 can overstep the boundaries. Otherwise, Liquid will then open up on them. You can already see the Tracer Fire been received. Circle updates. All of Liquid are going to have to move. 
And at the moment, it's only Vitality, the only team inside Ents. the circle. Ents can just kind of slot in. They'll be okay, I think. I would... The only thing that they need to be aware of is that this run right here is very open and very exposed. They'll be able to see it, they'll be able to hear it, but more importantly, they moved in while Vitality was moving out. Because Jazza was knocked at the start of it, he had the information that Ents had taken residency in here, so they'll now know they're kicking it around this position. There's no real act of surprise here for Ents, but there is a good level of cover. If they can get all four members there, that is. That's a really open field now. To get to that graveyard from up here, downhill, if they don't have the vehicles, it's going to be brutal. Yeah, now G2 are going to be able to get Braxco and Chris in towards the circle, leave the other two to be focused towards Unity, hinder their progress. But FaZe will engage towards G2. I don't know how much vision they're going to have on it, but they'll have enough. Now, I want to see how Liquid cross out of this as well. They're in a tough spot. That road, cutting them off, not going to make it easy. They might have utility left. I don't know how many fights they've been, if they've been enough to burn through that. I think they're safe for now. Aitzi on the move, trying to get anywhere he can, maybe more centralized, use that little bit of a dirt road that runs around the middle of this, see where he tries to kind of uh, get towards. They do have smokes and they do have vehicles left for Team Liquid. That's really nice for them. Samty trying to join up with Jeems, I can imagine. And the nades from G2 are doing well. Unity are in danger. They've got themselves cut into this corner. Tizrin's really the only one who could fight back at the moment as the other player, I think it's Dastish, was going for the revive. Now Unity in the blue. This is looking like points galore for G2. They're gonna rack up all of these. Dash just trying to heal, but this blue circle, this circle hurts a whole lot. Yeah, expect that health to be dropping pretty damn quickly. They pick up a few it. kills before going down. Squeaky should be able to get a res off this one. Uh, Liquid's bit of respite came off the back of Vitality being so focused on Ents. There was only one person to hold the back line, that was Narsus. He looked towards Aitzi. And basically just draw the attention away, which opened up a field for Liquid to move. Yeah, and at the moment, Ents are holding their own quite quite well against Vitality, even though the terrain they're in is far from perfect. Unity will bleed out. There's no way he's getting into this one. Team Liquid's starting to look for their options in the northern side of the new circle. FaZe does have a member in between them and G2, but G2 looks scary this game. They've already got a boatload of kills, and they're in the position to get a whole lot more. Ooh, but just crunch between two teams, standing his ground and hoping eventually he can take one before going down. Spots out Jeems. This will be an instant confirmation unless he gets turned on. Insta flush. And this is the problem now with these individual snakes. They cause teams problems because there's no sign of a res. Uber's unless you can in just... such a dangerous oh position. Oh Look my... at that. Look at that work from him. He got gem T as well. Don't Aitzi forget that. I think this could be phase eliminated. It is because of the issue they also had in the south. So now it's down to be between Liquid and G2. And now obviously Liquid are on the back foot. Those knocks coming in made it far from perfect for the third party. It strikes G2 try to split their attention everywhere. And it's not going well because Nasus got Udi here. So it's kind of evened out. I don't know if Liquid can get these revives though. I'm not sure the terrains that they've got to work with, how much cover they have here. They've got smokes that could try and make a play. But it is incredible how one team can be broken apart just by one player laying down. Both of the remaining members of FaZe do break them up. Where's Potentially, I mean, if he can get close, he can take that vehicle. It would be a ballsy player. Take the vehicle, pack it up in front of him, give him a, a level of defense. I think they've been spotted out yeah. now. So that's, yeah, the bleed out's going to be real. They can't get him. But keeping two up, that's fine. They've made the, uh, the best of a bad situation. But so, let's, let's look ahead of what's in front of G2. The problem is... <laughs> A lot of open ground. Ents, exactly. Ents and Vitality will have everything they need. Trifli and Rustamar are going to go for a push. Now, that's quite dangerous. Braxico is going to take the time now. He knows the Liquid will probably be taking their time to just you know, re-boost up, re-med up, get everything going for themselves. This is the time to try and hedge your bets. Get across that wayside. Get yourself into the fight. If these guys get pushed out, it's like that school situation. You want to be able to stop them before they get into a more powerful position. And Braxico is going to try and do that. He needs to not get spotted by the rest of Team Liquid. He's banking on Kane and Chris to keep him safe. But for now, we're seeing the graveyard oh, filling up with the bodies as Braxco. He appears and he strikes. Ents are probably baffled that someone's just appeared behind them in this situation. That should have never happened. And now their attention is split. They have Vitality on one side and a madman on the other. That's so smart. Leave two players behind for G2 to deal with Liquid and then just send one off on a mad dash. Turns apart of nowhere with the AUG. Pinces Ents in the backside, takes a player from them, picks up a point, and then walks back to his position. That's just disgusting. He's going to patrol central. He can basically be the If the he's got level three, I need to see his gear, but if he's got level three gear, then why not? You've got an AUG, just oh, be a man on a mission. Gemti, look at this angle. 
if they get away with this, I don't think G2 know that they can kind of go around this lower side of things. Quick Kane's been tagged change. up. Here we go. Gemti ready to strike just behind the rock. Does he? He might have caught a glimpse of him for a second. The X-ray kind of makes it hard to see, but G2 trying to move up here. That's Chris pulling up towards a similar position from Braxco, Good but now they're getting the in. attention of everyone. That's a little bit scary. They have to be willing to fight just about everyone on every side. Maybe they're banking on Vitality and Ents having to clash first, so they get some safety, so they can focus towards Team Liquid here. Mr. Mad out. Kramer spots him. I'm assuming that's from the back of the church side. Vitality. Bit of problems there. They lose one. At least they get an answer back from the side of Squeaky. Also going for the Red Shadow, just holding this down like a bouncer in a nightclub at the moment. None of them get out of the cemetery side. Jazza needs to be careful. They don't extend too far because now they're going to become exposed. Once you get out of this building, you'll be in dead sights. of a Beether and Jim to complete polar opposite, northern side of the circle. Kaint's up there still keeping them in check and just being a nuisance. Brexico has been allowed to move to the shack. The only bit of cover left in the center of the circle. Chris, well... He's just doing Chris things and wandering around like a madman. I, I wonder if Vitality's low ground play out of this building actually might work out. They will have to take like a one-to-one -one fight with Team Liquid. Never easy and G2 could third party, but Ence's predicament isn't great either. They're still on that high ground, which everyone can see. And they, I don't think they're going to have the time to run down to those arches. I think both of these teams, it's, it's a question of how much utility they've got. Where's the grenades? Where's the smokes? How much have they committed to these fights? They're already pointing them up now. You can see if that's a preemptive smoke from Vitality, they're committing. Random Molly doesn't go inside the window. If it had, it would have been cooking Brexico in there. God, that would have been perfect for them. Ents need this. As do Vitality. Hey, this is a big game for both. Top of the table, bottom of the table, right? Both Absolutely. of these teams either side. This will be a huge win. I think everyone's waiting to not be that team to engage. You see you know, the amount of players alive. You're, you're thinking, all right, let's just, let's just coast it out, wait for those engagements. Let's try and get maybe a little steal here or there. Gemti, not in a good spot, but it will be Rustamar in a worse one. Gemti does go down to Chris, and now here comes the engagement. End start Ooh. beacon, and they start falling. Nasus with some big shots. Shadow wants in on it. Just going to flush that one out. Squeaky is in the smoke, holding his breath, desperately trying to not go down. But it's Shadow, the last one. What? Shadow, what you lucky, lucky man, just flicks and absolutely dumpsters them. And now we're left with what we have here. Ibi in the north, G2 with two alive in the center, and Vitality with one man in the south. Brexco opens up the AUG from the wild window, and then Chris, time to strike from the back lines. Down goes Ibiza, G2 with a very strong win. That's gotta be, a, I didn't see the final kill count, 16. but good lord. Plus the 10 from the win. 26 point game as if G2 didn't need any more. <laughs> what a way to start day number two. Yeah, 16 kills. I mean, that is just insane, isn't it? Scary, scary team. Good positioning on that though. They played it incredibly well. That nade just got them going, got them across that road. And anytime you get them in game circle, they're starting to look like uh, a bit of a beast here to say the very least. Probably the best in Europe in my mind at the moment. I said it yesterday, the communication must be on point to be able to send players to certain parts of the map and keep them covered while doing so. Mm. Like, they play those final circles, they're always split, they're never grouped up, just holding back 